I've passed coding interviews at Google, Meta, Amazon, Uber, and many other companies. In this video, I'm going to give you all the things that have helped me go from failing my technical interviews to passing the majority of technical interviews that I attempt. Tons of people hate coding interviews, but being good at them can net you insane compensation packages with some of the highest paying companies netting you almost a million dollars. That's right, one million dollars cash. So whether or not you agree with the recruiting process is honestly irrelevant because landing some of these compensation packages can be life changing. And let's face it, online assessments and white whiteboard style coding interviews and system design questions are largely the format that most companies follow today. So instead of fighting the process, I strongly recommend getting good at it because landing the right opportunity makes the juice well worth the squeeze. As a quick disclaimer, I really want this video to be as helpful and as realistic as possible. I strongly believe that if you take 10 minutes and watch this entire video and apply the things I mentioned throughout the video, you'll find greater success in your tech interviews going forward. Also, be sure to stay till the end because I'll give you the eight steps that I use during all of my coding interviews. The first thing that's essential for passing coding interviews is simply adopting a long-term mindset towards them. Why? Well, I mean, unless you plan on staying at your next company for your entire career, you're going to need to interview again at other companies. I know, crazy. Because of this, it's really important that you spend the time up front getting good at technical interviews because it's almost guaranteed that it's a skill you're going to use again at some point in the future. And this tip tends to be hard for some people to stomach because realistically, people want results now. But honestly, that's not typically how the game of interviewing plays out. In fact, I attribute most of my success with tech interviews to just simply having done them for a while. But when I first started coding interviews, my mindset could not have been more different. I remember desperately trying to memorize questions and answers in the hope that I'd get a question I'd already seen during my interview. But this approach is extremely flawed, mostly for three simple reasons. First is that it puts your chances of actually succeeding during the interview into the hands of your interviewer and not yourself. And by relying on your interviewer asking you a very specific question, you are effectively gambling. And as much fun as putting all your money on red might be, solving coding interviews is mostly about applying data structures and algorithms to be able to solve a problem, not metaphorically trying to roll a seven in a game of dice. Although admittedly, that does sound way more fun than trying to reverse a linked list. And I always roll sevens. Second is that the question that your interviewer gives you can be changed very quickly and easily, making any solution that you know memorized useless. Just as a stupid example, imagine I asked you to swap two variables values. Easy, right? Okay, now what if I asked you to swap two variables values using only bitwise operations? See? Coding interviews are fun. That's not even necessarily a coding interview question, although I guess I technically have seen that before. It's more just the point that you actually need to be able to think through the problems and rely on previous knowledge that you know, not that you've memorized. Because by doing that, you can solve any question. But by memorizing things, you only know specific solutions to specific questions. You want to know information so that you can apply that information broadly to a whole wide variety of questions you might be asked. Even if you've never heard that question before. And third, the approach of memorizing questions and answers actually requires the same amount of time to study for interviews every single time you interview. Instead, what you should really do is spend the time to build a solid foundation in the topics and the concepts that are tested during coding interviews, which I'm also sorry to tell you takes time. This leads us to our next tip, which is to actually build that solid foundation in data structures and algorithms. Oh yeah, thanks Kevin, that's so easy and so simple to do. I know, I know it sounds complicated, but let's just break it down. The very first Thing when I was learning that I wished I had was an explanation for what data structures and algorithms were that didn't make them sound so scary. So here you go. Algorithms are just a series of instructions. If you've ever made a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, you have successfully run an algorithm. If you never made a peanut butter and jelly sandwich because you're allergic to peanuts, I can't help you. Data structures are just a way to organize information inside the memory of a computer. And depending on the problem that you're solving, the way that you might want to organize that information inside of the memory of the computer will vary. Still scary? Okay, do me a favor and imagine your dresser drawer. Your drawer is your computer's memory and how you choose to organize your shirts within that drawer is your choice of data structure. No organization? It's gonna take you a while to find your favorite shirt. Always put your favorite shirt at the very top of the pile. Finding your favorite shirt is gonna be stupid fast. What's the difference? I mean, obviously in the first case, you're storing shirts in an unsorted array and in the second case, you're storing them in a heap. Oh, you have no idea what I'm talking about. Well, that's why it's really critical to actually approach your data structures in a very specific order that you learn them. If you don't know what an array is, there is literally no shot you're going to understand how a heap works. You see, without following a logical order of how you should learn your data structures, you might metaphorically be learning multiplication before you actually know addition. And I would keep going with the math terminology, but clearly I am not very good at it. Instead, I'm just going to show you the order in which I would recommend learning data structures now that I know what I do. So here's that order now. 
Without approaching these topics and concepts in a logical order that encourages your learning, you're never gonna have a solid foundation to build off of. And if you don't think having a solid foundation is crucial for building your success, then please, please, please never build a house. So commit to learning algorithms and data structures in a logical way that encourages your learning, and now you're ready to start studying. And this brings us to our third tip, which is to practice, but in a very specific way. I hope this goes without saying because of our last point, but you really wanna practice in a way that encourages your learning and not rote memorization. When I studied, I practiced a certain number of problems every single day. And for me, my magic number was five. I solved five problems every single day, no matter how long it took me. Some days it might've taken me hours and other days it might've taken me 30 minutes. So your job is to solve five problems every single day, regardless of how long it takes you. Also, if you're stuck on a problem, feel free to look at the solution after honestly attempting the problem for about 30 minutes, but make sure you don't move on from the problem until you actually understand why the solution works. Remember, getting stuck is actually part of the process and honestly, it's where you learn the most. Moving on to a new problem before you actually understand the solution to the previous problem is really robbing yourself of learning. Learning that I'm sure you'll need during the real interview because as we all know, there's no way to look up the answer. As you improve, the time you'll need to finish your problems will decrease. But by far the most important thing I did was just show up each and every day and put effort into my studying, and I strongly recommend that you do the same. When practicing these problems, consistency is key to make sure that you retain the information you're learning and strengthen your interviewing muscles. Choosing a specific period of time over which you plan the study can also be really helpful to combat procrastination and ensure that you have a deadline. Ideally, this deadline would be in the form of an interview. Once you have built a solid foundation, I recommend never setting an interview date further than three weeks away. The reason for this is I feel like three weeks is a sweet spot to make sure that you actually have enough time to brush up on the topic you might need to, but also not drive yourself crazy studying. And while it's crucial that you actually don't drive yourself crazy practicing, it is important that you practice in a very specific way. One thing I always made sure to do is to make my practice harder than the expected difficulty of the interview. During the interview, you'll have 45 minutes to solve a problem. Try and solve a problem in 30 minutes when you're practicing. You're only going to be asked one question during a 45 minute interview. Try and solve two questions within 30 minutes when practicing. You're going to be able to write your solutions in a high level language like Python during the interview. Write your solutions in binary while you practice. All right, all right. Not not actually, but you get the point. Hopefully if you enforce stricter expectations on yourself when practicing, the interview itself is actually gonna be a walk in the park. And honestly, your goal should not be to meet the bar for a specific company. Your goal should be to define a new bar that all candidates have to rise up to. If you do crush the interview bar, hiring you is gonna be a no brainer from the company. And on top of that, it'll give you more leverage when you negotiate because you're such a strong candidate and you perform so well during the interviews. Now it's time for the final tip, which took me the longest to learn, which is to care less. I know, I know, I just told you in the last tip to redefine what a strong hire means at every single company you interview at. So now logically, the only way I can convince you is with science. You see, there's something called the Yerkes-Dodson Law. The Yerkes-Dodson Law is a model that expresses the relationship between stress and task performance. Too much stress and your performance will suffer due to anxiety. Too little stress and you won't perform well due to boredom. And if you're anything like me, and I'm guessing you are, you're probably way too far on the right side of this graph. So scientifically speaking, it is actually in your best interest to chill. And yes, chill is the scientific term. And if science doesn't do it for you, maybe these three things will. First, work is a four letter word, no matter what company you're employed by, no amount of swag, free food, ping pong tables, or other corporate offerings will change that. Second, if the interview you're really banking on does not go your way for one reason or another, you can almost always reapply to the company in a year. And trust me, a year goes by way faster than you think. And third, whatever company you're trying to get into, all of your life problems won't magically be solved once you get into that company. I'm not gonna go into the science this time, but just look up something called the hedonic treadmill, and I guarantee you it'll all make sense. Now, as promised, the eight steps that I use during every single one of my coding interviews. First, read and understand the problem. It sounds dumb until you actually spend 20 minutes during a real interview solving a question that is similar to the question you're being asked, but not the right question. Yeah, I actually did this. Two, ask clarifying questions. Almost every single problem is intentionally vague, and that's because part of building software is gathering requirements. Three, propose solutions and discuss each of their trade-offs with your interviewer. Four, choose a solution and ask your interviewer, how does that sound to you? This gives your interviewer a chance to give you the green light to start coding or to bring you back on the right path in case you strayed from it. Five, write your solution. Just write it. Six, rubber duck. Never assume that what you wrote is correct. Seven, run through test cases and prove that your code actually works. Eight, like and subscribe.